Everybody makes a big deal of the turkey. You know what the truth is? The best part is eating really fatty, cheesy, creamy potatoes. We're making scalloped potatoes. Scalloped potatoes are delightful. All you really need is salt, potatoes, and the trifecta of dairy, butter, cream, and cheese. I'll show you a couple of ways of cutting them. One, with a knife, two, with a mandolin. Both of them work really well. I like to choose a nakiri for cutting vegetables. I find it slides through the food really nicely, especially if your blade has some texture to the outside like this one does. The mandolin is fantastic. You are all gonna be afraid of it because you should, but if you stop before your hand runs into the blade, you'll be fine. What happens, the difference is that you can go a little faster with the mandolin you'll get very even slices. If you use your knife, feels like you're doing it on your own. You feel like you're putting a little bit more love into it and they'll end up with a bit more of that made with love, uh, rustic, homemade kind of look and feel to the potato. I've got some waxy potatoes here. This type won't fall apart as easily as something like a russet potato. If you want your uh, scalloped potatoes to be more like mashed potatoes, use a starchier potato. I like the potato to retain its shape as it cooks, so that's why I choose this style of potato. Simply, if I wanna cut this for my scalloped potatoes, I'm just going to grip my knife, holding the blade itself, give my claw grip onto the potato, and then slide the knife as I cut. I'm gonna to try to cut them in even thickness. That's so they end up with even cooking, and I'm cutting them maybe half a centimeter thick. It doesn't really matter if they're a little thicker or thinner because they do spend a lot of time in the oven breaking down. They're all gonna end up being cooked. You can vary your thickness a little bit and it's not a problem. If you do, however, wanna make them super even and super nice and thin, you take your mandolin and your potato and you just slice away. The secret I found with these is to not be pushing down. If you're pushing down, that's when you're gonna slip and you're gonna run into problems. The potato should glide right over the blade and you shouldn't be having to add extra force. Now, you end up losing a little bit of potato here because you don't wanna start trying to get really down to that last little bit. I mean, you could pop the guard on here and that'll help you but definitely don't try to get that last slice. If you're thinking I can get one more slice out of here and I'm just using my hand, that's when you're gonna cut yourself. But you can see they're all evenly sliced. I don't want the potatoes turning brown, so I'm gonna put them in a bowl and I'm gonna cover them with the cream. And it's the same cream I'm gonna cook them in. I don't wanna put them in water because the water's gonna pull out a bunch of the starch. I want that starch to stay in here because it's gonna help keep those scalloped potatoes together as they cook. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of cream in this bowl and then slide my potatoes in. And of course that was 35% full fat whipping cream because this is no diet business. This is like going for victory. This is the food that's gonna keep you warm for the winter and it's like you live outside. You need all that fat. I'm gonna slice this onion here for these potatoes. I'm gonna follow the lines around. I'm gonna saute them a bit in some butter, soften them up, then I'm gonna mix them in with the potatoes and the cream. The curries are awesome because you can just pick it up and put it down and it cuts right through because the edge comes in contact with the cutting board right away. But you can also do the old slidey technique. And then you roll the knife over and just change the angle so you can get relatively even slices of onion. Food scoops are a really handy thing. I'm not a real gadgety person. I use this thing all the time though. It really just makes the job of moving stuff from your cutting board to your pan a lot easier, especially if you use a nice big cutting board, which is really lovely to cut on. It's hard to pick up and wing it around your kitchen to dump stuff into the pan. So this subs in for that really nicely. I got a cast iron pan here with a bunch of butter in it, and I'm just gonna let these onions rip. I wanna soften them up. It'll help to turn them a little bit sweeter before I put them in. If the onions are really hot onion, this will help bring that heat down and bring the sweetness up, which will end up giving us a nicer flavor at the end 
with our scalloped potatoes. So I've got this microplane grater. This thing kicks ass. It's because the blades are really sharp and it's gonna make short work of grating this pile of cheese. Every self-respecting dish of scalloped potatoes has a whack load of cheese in it. I like white cheddar. Use whatever kind you want. It's really simple. You don't have to push too hard. If you're fighting with your cheese grater, it's because your cheese grater is not good enough. Cooking food shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be a workout. It should be easy. If it's not easy, you don't have the right tool for the job. All right, so we're just about done grating the cheese here. I've got a big pile of this stuff. It's gonna be great. These are cheesy potatoes. This is halfway to being poutine in a dish. I gotta mix this cheese in here. I don't want all of that cheese in there because I want some for the top. If you're not making a mess, make a mess. That's what happens when you cook with love. Then you should have someone else doing your dishes for you. The cook doesn't do the dishes. I've got these onions softening in this cast iron skillet behind me. I've got the cheese and I've got the salt mixed in here with the potatoes and the cream. I'm gonna mix in those onions, lay them out in the dish, top it with another layer of cheese, bang it in the oven, we're good to go. That's it, I'm gonna slap a little bit of foil on top. This guy's gonna go in the oven until a toothpick or a wood skewer can slip right through with no resistance. Now, there's two things you can do. You can take them out and you can eat them. There's nothing wrong with that. You could also take them out. You could put another sheet or another dish on top and put some cans on top of that to pressure, press your potatoes down. The weight will help the potatoes set up as they cool. You can cook them the next day again and you can actually turn them out of the pan and slice them. And they look fantastic if you fry them, get a little bit of golden edge to them. If you want it to look really pro, like if you want it to like, win someone's affection, kind of like extra steps of cooking. You know what I mean? You know what I mean.